high-stakes meeting of the world's most advanced democracies underway on China's doorstep. President Biden and other G7 leaders in Japan this weekend hammering out ways to counter China's economic coercion. The minister of the Chinese embassy in Japan, meanwhile, saying this, quote, stop interfering in China's internal affairs, stop suppressing China's economy and trade, stop hyping the China threat, and stop making the summit and related bilateral and multilateral activities a political performance of anti-China and containment. All of this as China is simultaneously holding its own summit with heads of five countries to its west. Before he left for Japan, Biden was peppered with questions about when he will meet with Xi Jinping. Then why haven't we had that phone call since the balloon incident? He wants to keep the lines of communication open. He talked about this just before we left D.C. Uh, there, there will be another uh, discussion with President Xi at the appropriate time. Unfortunately, every meeting uh, includes a lack of questions about what's important to the American people, like why the CCP covered up COVID-19. It's been nearly four months since the Chinese spy balloon flew across our country. Joining me right now is former Trump Deputy National Security Advisor, American Conservative Union Foundation board member, and the author of Revolution, Trump, Washington, and We the People, KT McFarland, back with us. KT, good to see you. Welcome back. Well, it's always a pleasure, and I'm so glad that you're focused on these issues uh, that, the, that the American administration is not focused on in Asia, and that is how do you really combat China? Because they're all well, talking, look, they're all saying things, but what they're yeah. thinking is quite different. And not only that, but every time Joe Biden speaks to Xi Jinping, we don't have any evidence that he mentioned COVID-19, uh, escaping a Wuhan lab, and right. why the CCP covered it up. We have no evidence that he's actually pushing back on surveillance of America, like that spy balloon. And we have no evidence of him bringing up the issue of intellectual uh, trade theft as well. Why not? Well, why do you think, Maria? I mean... We've now got, you know, evidence, black and white evidence, bank account evidence, that Joe Biden and his family got paid off by the Chinese. We now know that the Biden Penn Center, which is where the people from the Obama administration went, the think tank they went to before they then joined the Biden administration, that was bought and paid for by the Chinese government. So it's not just Joe Biden. It's all the people who work for him now, Tony Blinken and others, who were paid for by the Chinese government. They're not going to call China into question. And to think that they're going to go to this meeting and they'll all have, you know, they'll all talk about all the important things, but they're not doing anything about it. I mean, the French president went to uh, talk to the Chinese president not too long ago, and he said, look, with regard to Taiwan, we're not going to follow America's lead. The German government, they're negotiating with the Chinese for a port in Hamburg. And so whatever anybody is saying, it's not really what they're doing. It's certainly not what they ought to be doing. It's very disturbing. KT, assess the China threat for us. What's most concerning to you? Well, the Chinese have a plan, and they followed the plan, that within the decade, probably within the next five years, they plan to be the global empire, economically, technologically, militarily, diplomatically. And in the last couple of months, out of their own mouths, the Chinese president says China is going to command the global heights. We'll protect the world, we're, but we're going to have a new way of doing things. We're going to have this global civilization initiative. Every other country, you can keep what you want to do internally, but China's going to set the rules globally. That's a direct threat to the rules-based international order we've had since the end of World War II. China doesn't want allies. China wants to be the global superpower. Everybody else is going to be the vassal. And they're picking off these countries one at a time, one after another, wow. and they're playing to the greed and the economic interests. That's a very scary world five years from now if China's totally in charge. This is really disturbing, especially since we just learned recently that China decided to put police stations throughout America. I mean, what gall and arrogance to be able to think that would be okay. Uh, we've got a spotlight on it. You know that, KT. But I also want to shine the spotlight on the news we learned this week from the Durham report. Of course, it confirmed what we already knew, what mm -hmm. we have been reporting here for many years, that the Trump-Russia collusion story was made up by Trump's opponents, including Hillary Clinton's campaign and top Democrats. The report also revealing that the FBI shut down four separate criminal investigations into the Clinton Foundation. 
KT, you served as President Trump's deputy national security advisor. What's your reaction to all of this? Well, I knew because I was a victim of it. When the Mueller investigation and the FBI came after me in the early days of the Trump administration, they knew I hadn't committed any crime. But that didn't matter. They just wanted to go after anybody associated with President Trump and hope that they could break them or get them to lie or, at a minimum, bankrupt them. But I think as I take a step back, and it's not just about me, it's not just about President Trump, what is it about? We now have black and white evidence that the FBI interfered in the 2016 election. And then when they failed to get their candidate elected, Hillary Clinton, then they just set out to destroy the Trump administration. So then go back, go up to 2020. It was the CIA this time that got involved in the 2020 election with those 51 former intel agents who talked about the Hunter Biden laptop as total Russian disinformation. Mm. So they've gotten away with it for two elections. They're for sure going to get away with it, try to get away with it in 24, right? Because there's no consequence. The difference is in 2024, the evidence is there. We now have the Durham investigation. We have all the congressional investigations. There is now hard evidence that there was election interference by the U.S. intelligence agencies and the Department of Justice. They've got to be terrified, those individuals have to be terrified that a Republican president comes in in the 2024 election with a Republican attorney general, investigates them and charges them all with the crimes they've committed over the last eight years. Well, we'll see about that. You're right. There are questions around these elections because of this interference. Do you think there will be election interference then in 24? Take it to the bank. They will absolutely interfere wow. in 2024. We're not sure how. But they will absolutely interfere, not only because they're not going to like whoever the Republican candidate is, but because they're going to protect their own hides. That's why they're, they were talking to their own people, and the whistleblowers have brought this up, that they were told, don't put anything on paper, just tell us orally. They but, knew that they were doing stuff wrong. They knew that they yeah. were going to be liable for prosecution. Yeah, it's, it's too bad. I wish the media were more curious about all of this. Unfortunately, the media takes the narrative of the Democrat Party and runs with it and then tries to cancel anybody who's not on board. Well, they're in the same position. They, they can't possibly admit they were wrong because that sort of cuts under, it, it just undercuts their whole reason for being. So they're going to continue to have the fake narrative and they're going to continue to cover up and pretend that nothing bad went on. I mean, they're all in it together. This is what the terrible thing is. These people are selling the country. Sh they're just selling us out, not only to yeah. foreign leaders, but they're, they're interfering in our elections. They're tearing up the Constitution. Why? Because they want to protect their jobs. They want to protect their ratings. It just, it terrible. just is, I never thought I would be this upset about how anybody in the government was performing. But this is just a gut punch to the American people. It, it really is. And it's because you're a patriot. You don't want to see this kind of injustice. I agree with you. KT, it's good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Maria.